Oh, what's up everyone? This is Bo Pen. Today I'm going to show you something really cool, which is SOS Loadbook, which is a multi-language data analysis environment that based on Jupyter Loadbook. So when you do your data analysis, sometimes you uh, say use multiple languages, for example, use Python to do something, and then you ask something, MATLAB or, or SAS to do something. And then you end up with using multiple different environments and end up having multiple scripts in different files. So that can cause uh, some problems in the maintaining or sharing the projects. But uh, SOS Loadbook is created to solve those problems. Basically allows you to use multiple scripting languages in one notebook. So let's see how this SOS Loadbook works. So the usual way to use SOS, SOS Loadbook is that you install SOS and SOS Loadbook. For example, if you have the SOS installed, and if you have the, then you can start a Jupyter Loadbook. And in that case, you have a Loadbook, and then you create a kernel which is called SOS, and then you start working with that locally. But because uh, you, you are new to SOS, you don't have an a SOS notebook installed locally. So I will just show you an easier way. So basically what I, you would do is go to the SOS website and then click this button here. This is the rocket button means starting something. So if you click that, it starts a a, 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 that's a, our live SOS server from which you can open a SOS notebook. But first, I want to show you what are these. So basically, um, this is a Jupyter server. This is no difference between uh, the regular Jupyter server and others. And this is new. That means you can create a, a notebook. In a regular Jupyter Notebook, there are several different type of kernels, which is you can say you can create a notebook only for Bash, only for Julia, only for Octave, and only for Python R. And so if you are using SOS, basically SOS allows you to use all those kernels inside one notebook. That is to say, SOS is kind of sitting between the Jupyter and all the other kernels and help you to manage that and using one notebook to do everything. So let's say, say create an SOS notebook. Okay, this is on our live server. I can, let me see if the phone is big enough. So. If you create another kernel, now let's just try say Python 3, you will notice that the main notebook is just like a cell, like this. But for the SOS notebook, we have a side panel and we have something new here that's, a, uh, that's showing or hiding the scratch tab. And then we have a selection, kernel selection button here. This is called the global kernel selection, which is used for all new cells and which kernel you want to use. And this is the local kernel selector. Basically, you select which cell, which kernel this cell is. And then from the side panel, you can do a, a bunch of things. For example, you can show the talk. Of course, we don't have any talk right now. Uh, but if you have something like this is an example, this is a markdown cell. And then you see you have you have a you have a title here, and then you have the uh, this is a header. Uh, okay, this is a markdown cell, and then you see, and you can say this is the talk. Okay, and it shows you the uh, talk. But basically, the side panel can do many things that I will show you later. I mean, it can. Uh, preview variables and files and stuff and run scratch commands. So the side panel is actually something essential to SOS notebook uh, that, that's actually different from, from other side, side panels, even in the Jupyter lab. Anyway, so let's just uh, try to use this. I What I just did was to enter the markdown cells. So markdown cells is the kind of plain text cell that in which you can enter many different things. For example, this is a header, and you can enter a list, item one, item two. 
something something like that. So basically, with the markdown cell, you can enter rich text descriptions for your entire analysis. This is something something good because you you do want to make your analysis uh, readable to others, so that others can look at your notebook and and know what 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 you are doing. And then and that's the markdown cell. And then for for a, a Code cell, code cell. Basically, you can enter anything. That's uh, that's uh, say SOS, which is actually Python. SOS notebook is based on Python three point six. So you can say this is Bash, Julia, and R and stuff. And then let's just try to create a a real thing. Um, um, we have a file. Let's see. So the first trick is that. I can enter any command, say, with a exclamation sign here. So this will run any command. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get a file that from the uh, SS notebook documentation, and then this will basically just try to just run the wget command and get a file. So this is uh, called a, a shell command, and then. Uh, there's something called magic. Magic means anything that pre, uh, prefixed with the uh, uh, percent sign, and then there's several magic you can use, and one of them is called preview. Say so you just download that file, you want to see that the content of that file, so you can preview it, and it says only the first 200 lines of that many records are pre previewed. This is okay. Uh, if you don't like, do not like that, you can just say set a limit to two thousand, uh, like even three thousand, so, something like that. But the point is that now you can have a peek into your the content of your file, and then when you preview, actually we can see what's going on here. This is a file that that's a typical result from a differential suppression analysis with the ensemble gene ID, the base means, log two fold change, stat p-value, and adjust p-value. And then the, the problem we have is that when we have this result, we do not know what are those genes because, come on, what are those numbers? So we need to convert that ID to a HGNC IDs. And the problem also is that uh, I know how to do that in R, but I do not know how to import an Excel file in R. So I I want to use Python to do that. So that that is uh, that that is kind of troublesome in the uh, multiple file case, but in SOS notebook is quite easy. So for example, in Python, because SOS is Python, then we can enter. Um, I will just copy and paste because it takes time to type everything. So basically, what happened is that I just entered some Python command in a in an SOS cell, and import pandas and use panda to read that. Also, uh, I can execute the whole cell, or I can execute the cell one by one by Control Shift Enter. By control shift enter, what happens is that the, the content of one line will be sent to the side panel to execute. And this is something something that I really, really want from a Jupyter, other kernels, but uh, I couldn't do it. Basically because other Jupyter kernels doesn't have a side panel. So so it doesn't know well to execute that line because it doesn't want to interfere with the regular output anyway. So with SOS notebook, we can do that. Actually, say if the second line, if I execute that that line, you see that not only does it execute that one line, but also because it's a assignment, SOS knows that you just create a new variable, so it it adds a preview magic automatically to that statement, so that whenever you go through your lines, you know that uh, you know when nine by nine it shows you the results. This is something really cool with SOS notebook. So. Now you get the data, and then you know. Okay, you get that in uh, in Python. So the next step is you want to uh, analyze the data in SO in R. So there are two ways to do that. The first way is I can save the data in CVS in CSV file, and then read into R. 
That's doable, but a, a cooler way to do that is that in SOS, you can first say, let, let's just switch globally to the R. So this, this new cell will be R. We do something like a get data. So this is the magic of, uh, of SOS Lodo because it allows you to transfer variables between diff many different kernels, actually live kernels. We know that uh, the Python kernel is running. The R kernel is now just started. It was kind of slow because uh, you need to start R basically. So we get the data and what's going on here? Let's see. The data is like this. Right, this is the data, but it's in a, a R, the R data frame. So if we even try to do that preview data this time, then you can see that although the data is kind of the same, but it's different from what we saw in Python because this time the whole cell is in R and this is we are previewing a R data frame, right? So anyway, so now we are working R and we get the data from Python and then we can do, uh, we can perform the, our analysis. For example, let's just uh, do this. One more, let's do that with nine by nine, say library, we get that and then we uh, get an ensemble. And then this time if I, if I really want to say accurate this one line, I can say copy and paste here and execute it over there. So this is the scratch cell so that when I, whatever you execute over there, it won't interfere with your main notebook, which is the one that you will save. And then this is the next line. And then you can select those two lines to execute because uh, this is nine by nine doesn't work in this case. So it will, the same thing, control shift enter will execute the selected uh, statements and execute in the side panel. And now say I want to just select this one and I want to check the results, it's okay. Now we see that we do have an ensemble ID and external genome. We get the genome for all the IDs, good. So then we merge our data with the annotated data and with this. Okay, so what we, what, what we have done is that we went through a cell nine by nine and to make sure they worked. And then we can even say preview annotated. And then we run the whole thing again, just to make sure that, that we didn't miss anything, that the whole cell can be executed. So what happened is that after I run that everything again, now we know that annotated is the ensemble gene ID and we have the external genome here, okay? We have done our R part. So finally, we, we would like to go back to Python because we want to save in Excel. Again, R might, might be able to do that uh, easily, but uh, I do not know, and that's not the point. So basically, I want to get back to Python. So what I would do is like this. We get annotated from R, so this is the data frame we get from the R, and then we use some Python statement this because this would be a data frame, uh, the Python pandas data frame, and then we set index, we sort, and we save to the Excel file. Hmm, what's going on here? The error in evaluate stuff, couldn't find the function. Oh, okay, I see the problem because right now this cell is in R, so it's not a Python cell. So we need to change from R to SOS. Okay. Uh, no module no, named open PYXL, so we can do that. that that's a problem, but um, I think this can be solved by install something. Let's see if we install that package here using as command. Uh, okay, again, this is this is an R cell, but it doesn't matter because this is only a shell script. So, okay, we are, we are done here. So uh, then we can remove that cell, no problem because it's not helpful. Delete cell. Okay. 
So we have completed our analysis and then uh, if we, we want, then we can save the result to some HDM file, which we can do that easily with something like a save to HTML. And nothing. Basically, you only have the header and there's something magic here. You can show the old cells, but uh, there's something interesting here. I will show you in, in another video how to customize your rep report or, uh, saved by SOS. So anyway, so I think I have shown you the major things about SOS notebook, but there are some, there are many things going on. For example, say if you do not like the output of this one, you can use a clear magic to clear the output because that's not helpful to your report. And also there are many other magics. Basically you can go to the SOS website and go to the documentation and check on the SOS notebook. There's many magics over there. And say clear that I just showed you CD clear is banned and get and many many of them so it provides a really powerful environment I invite you to go through this documentation and also the other documentation is the supporting language which which uh, shows you how SOS supports those to use different kernels and support all those languages um, I think I will conclude this video for today and thank you for watching.